Hello everybody, it's Sylvie. Welcome back. I hope you're doing good. Today's video is going to be my Taurus season uh, wrap up favourites video. Things I've been loving, decks I've been using, my tarot practice, all that good stuff. You know the drill. Uh, so I'm just going to get straight into it. So my Taurus season has been kind of ups and downs kind of not exactly ups and downs just like simultaneously like I've been feeling good and I've been feeling bad it's been a weird one I've done quite a lot I started Taurus season with literal rainbows I think the first first day of Taurus season I took the dog for a walk it had been raining there was a rainbow in the sky it was beautiful uh, I had a lovely weekend with some friends I've started I say I've started I've done this for ages but um taking a tarot deck out and about with me um, but actually telling people <laughs> that I've got a tarot deck out and about with me and I ended up doing a bunch of like mini readings for them uh, over cocktails and it was so much fun. My tarot practice is something that I've kind of kept quiet from people for a really long time uh, just because, and you know how it goes, in the past several people who were very important to me were pretty judgy about it um, and yeah, but I'm starting to get over that. And it's been really fun. I also had a hen do for a friend that I went on. We have also finally had some nice weather. I think the beginning of Taurus season was really like quite grim, quite rainy still, quite gloomy. Um, but the past week or two, it's been getting warmer. There's been more sunshine. It's been really, really nice. And I have been making the most of it by reading outside in the garden uh, with the dog usually at my feet because he's a sun boy. Um, yeah, whenever I've had the chance, I've been outside. It's really, really nice to have a garden space again. The last few years I've been living in a rented flat and I haven't had access to an outside space. I've had to just like go to the park. Um, it's really nice to have like just a back garden. I can go outside whenever I like. Um, but yeah, I've not done anything too, too exciting, but it has generally been quite a good few weeks like I've simultaneously been feeling like I've been feeling a lot of things basically uh, but it has been I think quite like a positive few weeks which is nice that's what we like so moving on I would like to tell you that I have a really cool playlist of stuff I've been listening to during tourist season um, and I do have a playlist but it is mostly Taylor Swift still I'm still on my Taylor Swift kick um, and also just like a lot of ABBA <laughs> because I helped create the playlist for my friend's Hindu that I went on um, and ABBA was basically all that I added to it um, so I think that's basically all that's in that playlist. It's a lot of Taylor Swift and a lot of ABBA and then some like random new singles that I've come across and been enjoying. As for things I have been watching, I went to see the Dungeons and Dragons movie at the very beginning of Taurus season. I finally went to see this with my brother and a couple of friends and it was so much fun. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I hardly ever actually go to the movies. I think it's been a couple of years since I last went. So it was like a fun little treat. Um, and the movie was tons of fun. It's like exactly what I expected from a D&D &D movie. It delivered. I had a good time. So aside from that, it's mainly been YouTube that I've been watching when I've been watching anything. Uh, and a few videos that I really, really enjoyed. Um, Kelly Bear did a video it was like tarot confessions, confessions of a tarot reader, I think is what she called it. Um, I will link everything obviously in the description uh, if you haven't already seen it. She was talking through all of the things that she does like as a tarot reader in her tarot practice that are like not what we are like, I wanna say taught to do um, or like, you know, what the books will tell us, what the like conventional tarot wisdom is. Um, and I really enjoyed this video because there's a lot of stuff I don't do either. Uh, I don't really see my tarot practice as a spiritual practice. So I feel like a lot of the advice that people give about how you're supposed to like treat your tarot decks and how you're supposed to like treat every tarot reading as like a sacred or like a spiritual practice like that just doesn't apply to me um so like I'll do readings on the fly I'll do them in pubs I'll wreck my tarot decks I don't think I've ever cleansed a tarot deck like stuff like that like there's a lot of stuff that I do like quote unquote wrong um and so it was just really fun to like see somebody else also talk about all the stuff that they do that like some people would say makes you a bad tarot reader um so that was really 
enjoyable and I would highly recommend it if you haven't seen it yet. There was also uh, Lady Knight of Avalon did a couple of videos personifying the court cards. So there was one with them giving like advice, like what advice the court cards would give you. And then the second video was them giving like very brutally honest advice, um, which was very funny, but also very true. And so I would recommend those two if you struggle with the court cards like I do. Uh, they were like short and sweet, but they helped like bring the court cards to life a little bit. And then also video wise, I have been really, really enjoying um, Candy, Candy, Soul and Soil, and Thea Garden Goddess Tarot, their Garden Arcana series that they've started, as well as um, Candy did a video a few weeks ago, sort of opening up her garden again and taking us around it and seeing what was there, uh, which I've just been finding really, really inspiring. Um, like I said, I'm really enjoying having a garden space. I'm calling it a garden space. It is technically a garden. It's mostly paving, there's some astroturf and then there's a couple of beds and a tree and it's all very unkempt and full of weeds and I don't know what I'm doing in the garden. Um, I have a lot of like weird feelings surrounding gardening uh, but anyway I'm still really enjoying having a garden space and it's been really inspiring to watch their like garden videos. It's made me really want to like get out and be in my garden like even if I'm not doing anything with it. I'm just really enjoying like sitting in the space. I definitely don't have enough going on in my garden to like connect it to the tarot because it is, it's, the bluebells have all died. We had bluebells, uh, like I say weeds and they are because they are, they're Spanish bluebells which apparently are an invasive species of bluebells. They're not English bluebells. They were still really pretty. The bees loved them. I enjoyed them, uh, but they're all, they're all dead now. <laughs> but so all that is out there is like weeds in this one, very chaotic tree. Um, but it's just been very inspiring. I've been having a lot of like big feelings about the springtime and the garden. It's all very tangly and weird. Like I've had a lot of mental health shit happening for ever. Uh, but specifically like the last few years, but it's this spring that I've been starting to feel like a bit more like a person again. Um, and so the kind of growth of spring and the like newness of spring I've just been feeling very connected to this year um, and like I want to be in the garden, I want to spend time in the garden, I want to like actually do some gardening but um, I have like weird conflicting like grief feelings about finally having a garden space but no idea what to do with it. Oh how personal do I want to get on this tarot channel today? Uh, basically my mum died a few years ago and she is the person who she loved her garden, she was always outside in the garden, it was beautiful um, and I would be asking her what to do with my garden but I can't and so I have like weird just weird with lots of big feelings about the garden basically um but in spite of all of that I have been very much enjoying just going outside looking at the bees telling myself I need to do something about the weeds that are growing <laughs> like it's just nice to like have a space to go and sit all right um I was interrupted by the cat I was definitely off on a tangent about garden feelings um, but all of that to say, Candy and Thea's garden videos, I've just been really enjoying. I've been enjoying like seeing people in their garden spaces, enjoying their garden spaces, feeling inspired to enjoy my garden space, all of that good stuff. So those are the things I've been watching. I don't think there were, I don't think there was anything else I like specifically wanted to highlight. Um, so moving along to things I have been reading. I've not been watching loads of stuff because I've actually been reading things, which is very exciting because I tend to go like, I have like up and down with all of my hobbies, reading included. Um, and recently I've been like eating books. It's been great. <laughs> uh, so, so very quickly, I wanted to mention a blog post that I read. So after what I mentioned in my Aries favorites about combining like physics ideas and physics theories with like tarot and using physics ideas to like conceptualize the tarot I guess. Um, I came across a blog post from Mary Kay Greer on her blog called Stephen Hawking on Prediction and Astrology. It's from sometime in 2015. I have no idea how I stumbled across it. I wasn't looking for it. I wasn't specifically looking for like physics tarot stuff because that is something that I'll occasionally like try and search for and this has not come up previously. I must have been on her blog for something else. Regardless, um, I guess that's just the power of synchronicity for you. 
Um, I will link it in the description if you want to have a read, but it was like seriously, seriously interesting. It does get quite sciencey, but um, I just find it really exciting. As for like fiction, I have been on a serious like romance book kick. I have been devouring Tessa Dare's Regency romance books at a swift pace uh, because I read them on my Kindle and I've been having even more struggle than usual sleeping recently. So I've been spending more time reading. Um, and I've been wanting something a bit like lighter and like fun and predictable where I don't have to think too hard and Regency Romance is perfect for that. I say this, I've been watching the new season of Bridgerton. I'm still, I've been taking it like very slow and steady. I'm very pleased with myself. I've not been like watching the whole season in one day. Um, but yeah, so that's been a thing. I've also read a couple of contemporary romances by Ashley Herring Blake. They're both sapphic romances. I really love them both. I'm really excited for her next book, which I think is out later this year. But if you want like contemporary sapphic romances, highly, highly, highly recommend both of her books. I really enjoyed them. And I've also been dipping back into some young adult fantasy because like my brain has just been very mushy. Um, I've not been sleeping, big feelings, blah, blah, blah. Um, and young adult fantasy is just like that bit easier to read. So I've been reading the Graceling series. I read Graceling and Fire, which are the first two books in this series. This one is kind of like a prequel set in a different place. Uh, they're pretty like standard young adult fantasy fair in terms of like the basic plot and story. You know, high fantasy world in Graceling, some people in this kingdom are born with like special abilities. They're called Gracelings. Our main character is one of them. She's like an assassin and it sounds like very standard young adult fantasy stuff, but it does some very different things. Um, and then this is a prequel in a different kingdom with like different kinds of magic going on. And they both were just, they were just really good. They had your usual like YA fantasy wars and high stakes and like bits of romance, but like they were not super predictable. They were both a bit different. I thought they were both really good. I have the next one also. This is Bitter Blue, which follows on from Graceling, I think like eight years later. And I'm gonna be cracking this one open next. These have been my sunshine reads because these are like physical books, as you can see. I can't read these in the dark. Uh, so I've been reading these while I've been like outside enjoying the sun. We're gonna move on to my tarot practice because I've already been talking for quite some time and I think I have a lot of tarot stuff to say. Uh, my practice in Taurus season has been honestly kind of like all over the shop. Um, I've been doing little bits of lots of different things. So it's been quite like, it's not felt chaotic, but when I was trying to like figure out what I've been doing, what I've been reading and all that kind of stuff, it looks quite chaotic. Um, but this is a good thing. I'm really pleased about it because like I know what I'm like and this is a sign that I'm actually really engaging with my tarot practice. I'm really enjoying it. I'm getting a lot out of it. Um, Cause that's like how I function best is when I can like dip between different things and like circle around lots of different stuff. Um, so yeah. I'm enjoying it. I don't want to jinx it, but I'm hoping that this is also a sign that I'm just like generally on a bit of an upswing, like as a person. <laughs> so I have lots of stuff to chat about and I will get into it. Uh, beginning with my monthly daily draws. So I talk about this all the time. I do a monthly daily draw. I did a whole video on this. I do a monthly daily draw from a different deck and it's less kind of a reading um, and more a kind of deck study. And because I do these based on the calendar months and the astrological sign times do not correlate, um, I finished this at the end, or I finished working with this at the end of April. Um, so yes, this is the Ask the Witch Tarot. Did I mention that? Quite possibly not. I've now spent a fair bit of time with this deck. I pulled a card a day. Um, I'm honestly not really sure how I feel about this deck. So I really like the artwork and I think the choices, I mean, it's it's fairly right away Smith based in the minors, uh, the majors are a bit different, um, but in the minors and in the courts, I really love the artwork. I think the style is really beautiful. It captures the right away Smith um, like symbols really well, while still being like clearly set in its own world. I love the colour scheme. I love these like super saturated colours. But the majors, I'm kind of, I'm not so sure about 
the choices for all of them. Um, some of them feel like maybe a bit contrived. Uh, so each of the mages is based on a different like witchy figure from history or from folklore. Uh, and some of them, at least how they were presented in the guidebook, which I forgot to grab, um, some of them, I'm not super convinced by all the choices, basically. Um, bear in mind, these are like witchy type figures. I don't know if they would all have used the word witch, but they're from like various different cultures and I'm not familiar with a lot of them. So I, this is all based on how they were presented in the guidebook. Um, but I'm not super convinced with all of the choices. I think that's something that you, I do love this Queen of Swords though. Um, I think that's something that you just kind of have to expect. Like this judgment, I'm just not, I'm not convinced by it basically. Um, and I think that is just something you have to accept when you're doing like a thematic deck, like you've got these archetypes and sometimes you do have to kind of force things a little bit to make it work. But yeah, so I'm not sure if that's uh, an issue with the like figure that's representing the card and like the choice that was made or if it's the like perspective of the card meaning itself that's being portrayed. Um, I don't know if it's possible to say and like again I don't have a lot of knowledge on a lot of these figures outside the guidebook so it's just like my thoughts as of right now. So yeah I'm kind of just not really sure what I think about it in terms of the artwork and the choices that are made. I don't dislike it I'm just not super sure. Um, I think maybe it's not best suited for a daily draw like I've been doing with it. Uh, I didn't really work with this one in larger readings throughout the month it's just been single card pull, card pulls so that might be a bit of a different experience uh, as for the guidebook which I now I'm gonna have to grab so my thoughts on the guidebook also kind of a bit mixed some of the so here you can see that um each of the majors we get a bit of like a history of the figure that was chosen to represent it so what was it, it was judgment that I was unsure about wasn't it like some of them make loads of sense like the fates the Wheel of Fortune. I've definitely seen that representation before and I've got no problem with it. It makes perfect sense to me. Uh, and then Judgment. Bifana. During the first nights of the new year, an old witch flies in the skies. Her clothes are simple, she rides a traditional broom and she knows how to navigate using the stars. In ancient folklore, she is the symbol of the year gone by and the keeper of the harvest that is to come. In the most common tradition, she brings gifts for the children and brings back the capacity for childlike wonder to the adults. So yeah, I'm just not really sure if that screams judgment. Um, but hey, it is it is what it is. Um, and then we get a little bit less information for each of the minor cards, as well as some keywords, your standard kind of guidebook fare. Some of them... I really enjoyed to the King of Pentacles. It opened naturally to the King of Pentacles because if you've been watching some of my previous videos, you know I have been stalked by the King of Pentacles as of late. Um, I think he came up three times in April. Uh, so like the image I really love. And then the guidebook description. Uh, he is the embodiment of the earth's ancestor, of the material of the wood that grows ring by ring in the tree's trunk. He accumulates wealth and turns every clump of dirt into a profit. He does not leave things as they are, he intervenes knowingly. He remembers that woods where we love to wander are born from the collaboration between man and plants. This ancestor king is an able forester and shares his experience with the places where he roams. His companion and alter ego, the stag king, enriches the king's practical sense with the sensuality of the woods and a contemplative spirit. So like this description is very much like of this world that's been created with the Ask the Witch tarot. It's quite like specific to the like the vibes of this deck and like the world building of this deck rather than just like a straightforward generic king of pentacles meaning um, and like that I really enjoy. Um, it's part of why I do this and like pick a deck every month to dive into. It's much more fun when there is like a rich world to do that with. Uh, but then like some of them just didn't do that. Some of them were like extremely straightforward. Um, there is also this section at the back that I want to mention. So it's called The Witch's Messages. And it just has like a quick little piece of advice 
for each card or like a little affirmation type thing for each card. It's like a quick reference um, and it doesn't repeat as far as I can tell. It doesn't repeat what is said earlier in the guidebook. It kind of is like an additional little piece of interpretation, um, which I really enjoyed. That was really fun. Um, I kind of like when guidebooks have the deck talk to you in this way, I guess. Um, but yeah, right, second cat interruption of the video. Uh, I think that was basically everything I had to say about the, like, I feel like that's not a lot, but I think that's basically everything I had to say. I'm still not really sure about it. I love the visuals of the artwork. Um, I'm not super convinced by all of the choices. The guidebook is not bad by any stretch. It's not the best guidebook I've ever encountered. It's fairly like middle of the road stuff, I guess. Do I have anything else to say? Um, okay, I've said this before. I hate the physical tactile experience of these cards. They are huge, like dimensions wise. Um, they're really stiff. The card stock's really thick. It's really cardboardy. There's no like core to it. Um, they're really hard to shuffle. I can't riffle shuffle them. If I decide to like keep the stack and work with it a lot, a lot I might trim them. Um, but yeah, I hate the cardstock. It's glossy. The backs are so ugly. Um, <laughs> you know, that is what it is. Uh, but yeah, so that's my kind of rambly thoughts on the Ask the Witch. I just don't super know how I feel about it. And I think it might be one that doesn't stay in my collection like forever unless I have a change of heart with it. Uh, so that is, that is that one. And then now it is May, I have moved on to the Midnight Magic tarot deck. I think my camera angle is all skew if again, I do apologize. Uh, so very briefly, because I'm still working with this. Uh, this is the Midnight Magic, came out right at the end of April. I'd had it pre-ordered um, and I had a little flick through when it arrived and I was just charmed by it and I wanted to use it. Um, so these are the bags. It's also very cardboardy, but slightly easier to shuffle and like a normal tarot size. Do you see like the size difference? The Ask the Witch is just like big. Anyway. Uh, so the Four of Cups was my card this morning. Uh, as you can see, it's it's just mushrooms all throughout the deck. There's no people, it's just mushrooms. Um, it's kind of an abstraction of the Rider Waite Smith in a way, um, because there's no people. I've been really enjoying it, it's been really nice. I mentioned this in my Cozy Decks video because the fact that there are no people and the cards are not staring back at me, <laughs> um, I've just been really enjoying. Um, and it's also just a new angle to view the tarot from. I know very little about mushrooms. There is a different mushroom in each card and it tells you the name of it. It does tell you in the guidebook what each of the mushrooms is and like why each mushroom has been picked for each card. And that's just, it's just a new kind of angle, a new perspective on the tarot, which I'm really enjoying. I'm just really enjoying kind of sitting with it for a few minutes each day. Uh, the art is also gorgeous, which helps. So yeah, that's my brief initial thoughts on the Midnight Magic. I like it very much so far. So also tarot wise, I am doing my Marseille for May. Um, I did a video about this. Um, my Marseille for May study practice. Uh, this is kind of going slowly but steadily. I've been working through tarot, the open reading, um, and kind of the bit at the beginning, which talks about like how to read the cards, like uh, directions, colors, numbers of things. Um, and I've basically just been like practicing reading. I've not really done any readings yet, but I've just been kind of practicing how to read in that sense, uh, which has been really fun. I'm enjoying it. This is obviously, I say Marseille for May, this is gonna be a long-term thing, but I've been really liking the Marseille. It's just been, it's fun to like learn a new system. So I have the uh, Dinosaur de Marseille and the Squid Cake. This is very cute. This looks like a more traditional art style, but is dinosaurs. So these are the backs. And then, and so it's um, ammonites instead of pentacles, ferns instead of swords, 
um, that is our high priestess. Fossils instead of ones, and what's missing? Cups. Something, I think it's crinoids instead of cups. Yeah. So, this has been really enjoyable. I just, I also love the size of both of these decks. They're, um, they're cute. So I don't have anything groundbreaking to say about the Marseille because I'm very much still in like the early stages of it, but I am enjoying working with it all the same. So also kind of in the realm of tarot study is the Deccan walk. Um, I told you I was doing lots of uh, different things. Um, so I've caught back up with the Deccan walk. I've decided that in terms of like like the study portion of this, I guess. Um, I'm just adding these notes to my Notion Tarot database I've got going for the time being. I haven't actually delved into Gemini 1 yet, but I will do so hopefully in the next couple of days. And I've been using my uh, Rider Waite Smith Centennial and my Thoth deck to like look at, <laughs> as well as this is Tarot and Astrology by Corinne Kenner. I've been referring to this a lot because it has them all split out like by Deccan. And then also uh, Susan T. Chang's blog. She's done a post for each of the Deccans. I believe that is the basis for her, oh, what's it called? 36, 36 Secrets? 36 something. I believe that the blog is the basis for her book, which is just a little bit too expensive for me to buy right now. Um, but yeah, but her blog is excellent and I highly recommend for Deccan walk purposes. So I only caught up with the Deccans in uh, I think the second or third Deccan of Taurus was when I was like actually all caught up so I'm now doing the current Deccan as we go. Um, but I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying the kind of slower study of the cards um, and I like how it's like a mini progression of three cards and so it's kind of a little bit of that like cycle of the tarot. Um, and this is forcing me to relate to the astrology much more, which is the primary reason I wanted to do a Deccan walk because I want to learn the Thoth system. I'm a little bit intimidated by the Thoth system. So doing it this way, starting out with a Deccan walk and learning a bit more about astrology and how it applies to the tarot, because I'm also doing um, a bit more of a deep dive into the associated like major cards for each of the minors, uh, so like Aries one, the two of wands is Mars in Aries. Um, and so as well as the two of wands, you've also got the tower and the emperor. Um, so I'm doing that as well. So I'm getting a bit more of a grounding in the astrology of the major cards at the same time. And I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying adding that extra like layer of knowledge and depth to each of the minors as I'm going through them. Uh, and it's really fun. And um, yeah, I've had this book for a while. I've found it really valuable for ages, but um, it's still valuable now, I guess. I'm not sure where I was going with that. Right, I still have more to say. I've actually got decks to talk about in like my like regular daily practice. So, uh, okay, this is the Groovy Weight Sparkles Edition by Tarot Collectibles. This was in my spring Tarot TBR, and I've been grabbing for this most of the time when I just want to like like look how sparkly, I love it. Um, this has been one of my go-tos, the one I've reached for the most, I think, on just like a daily basis when I wanna do a reading. Um, it's a Rider-Waite Smith base, so it's really easy to read. It's sparkly, it's groovy. How can you not love it? Um, I don't wanna stop flicking through because I just, like all you need is love in the Knight of Cups. Um, so yeah, I edged it really badly in this pink to try and match the backs which are really boring. Um, so yeah, that is the Groovy Weight Sparkles, which has been like a like a daily reader, basically. Um, oh my God, the saga of the Chrysalis Tarot continues. So this was also in my spring tarot to be read. And a couple of weeks ago, or last week maybe, um, I picked up fucking, okay. It was after I did the, um, my favorite, pentacles, swords, cups, wands, videos. Uh, I think two of those are up, two of those have been filmed and are still to go up. I think cups and wands are both up and the others are coming soon. But anyway, I pulled this, this mirrors is the swords, no it's not, mirrors is the cups suit 
and I pulled this as like one of my favorite Nine of Cups cards. And after I'd filmed those videos and put everything away, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna read with the chrysalis and figure it out as I go because it's got like a different system. It's got a lot of changed majors. It's got changed court cards. And so I've been a little bit like baffled by it, but I thought we'll just dive in. We'll just give it a go. And I've lost the bloody two of pentacles. I have, or two of stones or whatever it is. Yeah, two of stones in this deck. I have no idea where it is. I'm a card short. So I finally decided to actually pick up this deck and read with it. And the two of stones is nowhere to be seen. So I've been foiled. So yeah, this has just been sat on a shelf, sad and lonely until I, I'm hoping I find the missing card. I have absolutely no idea where it is. I may have used it as a bookmark. It might be stuck in like my diary or a tarot book somewhere. I'm hoping I find it because I finally decided to read with this deck and the universe said no. So what have I been reading with? Well, let me tell you. So this is the Way Home Tarot. And I have started to play around with doing a like week long weekly reading. So I pull a few cards on like a Monday and a Wednesday and a Friday. This is not an original idea. I definitely saw it in a YouTube video from somebody. I forget who. Um, but this deck has been the deck I've been doing that with. I think this is the third week I've been doing that. And I'm really liking it. Um, it's nice to have like a slower reading where I don't feel like I have to figure out all the meanings all at once which can sometimes feel a bit overwhelming and this deck has been really good for that kind of reading because of the imagery it's quite like uncluttered and it's not full of symbols that you can easily read there's like less going on in each card and so it's a good one for like sitting with and contemplating a bit more slowly uh, so I've been really enjoying using this deck in that way um and just an excuse to read with this deck i think it's gorgeous this deck came up so much in my um in my my favorite miners videos that i've done this definitely appeared in each suit uh, multiple times i also really like the court cards in this because they're people but they're outlines so they're not looking at you and you have a different representation of each of the elements in the silhouettes so i can't find another one now but yeah, like I really like this as the as the King of Swords with the cup up here, and then this like mirror reflection of the trees on the lake. I think it's fantastic. So that is the way home tarot. Uh, the cat's yelling at me because she thinks she can't jump onto the bed unaided, which is a lie. Don't believe her. Um, so. I am also still going strong with my Grimalkin's Curious Cats Tarot. I mentioned this in my Aries season favourites. Um, this deck is, is just nice to me. And like I say, I've been feeling some big feelings. I've been feeling a bit squishy and vulnerable. Even though I'm starting to feel better, I'm still squishy. I'm just kind of more okay with it. Um, but anyway, so I've been using this quite a lot. And I've been adding in the Urban Crow Oracle, which I recently ish acquired so they're both for the same artist so obviously they look really good together um and i've been pulling a few cards from the grimalkins and then pulling a crow oracle card as like a clarifier or i've been pulling three oracle cards as like my reading and then i've been pulling a tarot card for each as like a practical advice for the answers that the crow cards are giving me. Does that make sense? I'm realizing it's actually quite hard to flip two decks and talk at the same time. Apparently that is the limit of my multitasking skills. Um, but yes, yeah, so I've been really enjoying these together. Um, I think I'm in my Oracle deck era um, and my Marseille era and maybe my Thoth deck era coming soon with the deck and walk. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, I did a video a while back talking about my like struggles with reading oracle cards. Um, and this is something that's been really working for me. So either reading this as like a, like a, a not a clarifier so much as like a, a theme for the tarot reading or reading the oracle cards first. So I'll do like a three card reading. Um, 
and these is my like primary answers and like the messages they give are my primary answers and then pulling tarot cards for each card um as as yeah like kind of like a how so like if this is my answer and the two so the up, upheaval is the answer and two of cups is how to implement that upheaval that's an odd combination but hey sometimes the tarot is like that maybe the upheaval that's required is a new relationship who knows um <laughs> anyway so i've been i've been really liking these um like i've mentioned a hundred times her decks have really grown on me to the point that I've pre-ordered the uh, mass market Fraxa that is coming out in it's coming out in October I think at least in the UK um and I also pre-ordered a copy of her new indie deck which is called the Raven's Dream or Prophecy I've forgotten now um but it looks absolutely stunning and I think it's out in July again with the weird pairings like three of swords and bond that just seems a bit counterintuitive but then her decks have always been like that for me I'm like I've I've gone into them thinking that I'm going to feel one way about it and then worked for 10 minutes and realized that actually it's something entirely different so bond by way of three over stores is that just trauma bonding maybe anyway moving on I think I'm about done is that possible maybe no, that's a lie. Okay, so this isn't my practice, but I want to talk about it because I'm really pleased with it. So I trimmed my, ooh. So this is the Golden Tarot from Cat Black, uh, which has recently been reissued in a linen cardstock, I believe. Um, and I have been, I've loved this deck for a very long time. And I very recently trimmed it, which I've wanted to do for ages. And I finally had the guts to do so because this back was the borders of the cards and they were quite like chunky borders and so it just made the entire deck look really brown um they're super glossy and reflective I do kind of wish I had the linen but I don't want to buy a whole another one when I've just spent hours trimming this one um but yeah like so say like here this is the six of coins and it's got this vibrant red it's got this like light greeny color it's got this gorgeous pastel like blue sky yeah but you never saw any of that because it was surrounded by this like brown border and same with like I think it's the five of wands is another really good example of a card that just like it popped as soon as I took those borders off and like here you've got like this blue of the sky which just kind of was drowned out before and then when you do have a card like this that doesn't have so much brown that also was lost in the borders. Have I lost another card? Yeah, no, I did. It was right at the start. Um, so this is the Five of Wands. Um, and yeah, you've got this this dark sky and this, like, this, this orangey colour here, I feel like actually stands out now when it didn't before on this border. Um, and yeah, you've got, like, the soft blue and these, like, pinky pastel colours in the, in the clothing of the figures and it just pops so much more now that you don't have that like ugly orange border so I trimmed them I did a very good job if I do say so myself except except on like a couple of the corners where I used the wrong size corner rounder but it's not too bad and then I've very badly colored them in to kind of match the backs um, and I also I really like the size now like they're a very they're a very comfy size they're somewhere between like a standard tarot and something like a Fournier deck maybe which I think is a little bit smaller than this um but yeah because they were actually quite chunky cards before so so yeah that's also a thing that I've done so I guess I'm also in my deck modding era <laughs> I told you I have lots of like little kind of bits and pieces going on um, but it's all engaging with the tarot, it's all engaging with my collection, and so I've been really enjoying all of it. Um, since we're here, and this is already a long video, and apparently I'm just giving into it, I'm also going to show you the Crystal World Tarot really briefly. This isn't going to be like a walkthrough or anything. Um, this I backed from Kickstarter back in, I think it was November or December. Um, one of the stretch goals was this little oracle deck, which is really nice. And... I think the box is gorgeous. It's like this comic book style almost. 
so I didn't film like an unboxing or a walkthrough, uh, partly because I just couldn't be bothered, I was too excited and I wanted to open it, uh, but also I'm not sure if you can purchase this deck anywhere and it felt like maybe it would be a bit unfair to unbox something that I'm not sure you can actually go out and buy. Um, yeah, I don't know. Although having said that, like I probably would still do that if I was really excited. It's just about like what I want to show and what I want to film. Um, a fair bit of nudity in this deck, so I guess content warning for that. Um, but anyway, this I haven't. This came in post literally yesterday morning, um, so I haven't really had a chance to get to know it yet. But I think the artwork is gorgeous. I think it was described on the Kickstarter as like a like punk queer landscape. And so far it's living up to that and I can't wait to get into it. I think the art is stunning, the card looks really nice, it's gilded, it's all good stuff. I'm really looking forward to like digging into it. I'm thinking that possibly I might really like this as another like week long deck uh, like I've been doing with the Way Home Tarot. I think this might be another good contender because although it is fairly Rider Waite Smith based, it also is very much like in its own world. And also I think it might be cool to bring the Oracle deck in with it as well. Like maybe draw, I've been drawing three cards three times a week. So maybe either add an Oracle or replace one of the tarot cards with an Oracle card. I'm not sure, but um, I will have a play around with it. And if anything interesting comes of it, I will let you know in my next favorites wrap up, roundup, whatever this is. Uh, so yeah. So I think I am finally actually done talking, you'll be thrilled to hear. Um, I think that's everything that I wanted to talk about. Um, as far as my practice goes, I think that's probably everything I could mention. Um, yeah, lots of little things, like I said, or like a little bit of lots of things, but I've been really enjoying it. It's how I like practice best is when I can dip in and out of lots of different things um, and be bringing everything together in the practice of doing that. So my voice is starting to go, I don't know if you can hear it, but I will leave this video here. I think that is a sign that I should stop. So thank you very much for watching. I hope that you have enjoyed my Taurus season roundup. Uh, let me know what you've been up to. Let me know, let me know whatever you like. Talk to me in the comments, say hi. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching. Thank you for spending some time with me and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.